God morning, here is uh, morning almost lunch time in Sweden. And my name is Eva Vigenius, but my first name is Anna. It's very important just now as I have found out that I am uh, from Jewish, uh, the Jewish tribes in Israel. Uh, so the Jewish name is Hannah, that's Hebrew, but uh, the name uh, in English is Anna or Anne. Uh, it's, uh, and it was a prophetess, prophet, female prophet in the Bible, uh, that her name was Anna or Hannah. And uh, I, I, I didn't talk uh, so much about uh, the feast, the country, country feast uh, that I was to my daughter. And uh, there is not really the church, it's their income for the church. And they have... Uh, there are a restaurant and uh, that you saw a little picture of it and uh, the first one in that picture is my daughter and she had become to be a more into this uh, their shows that she is more per uh, performer now than before, uh, before she was peeling the potatoes uh, behind the scene uh, in the kitchen and was not allowed to be outside on the stage or, and now she is in the front and, and that is because those people in the church have left the church even if they are relatives, uh, that they are family members, they, they have left the church. They, they have started to get insight how stupid uh, they were doing this with the church, that they trust uh, what they were saying, their leaders. Uh, even if they were family members of the leaders of the church, have they understand there is a life outside this church, and this church is uh, it's called the a sect because it's uh, what is a sect? It is a a sect is when those leader decide leaders or leader decide what you should think what you should say what you should do they they have they want to have control of all all movement in life for you and then they tell you what your life should be and they lie for you to uh, make make them to get in control so they have encouraged like so many churches do encouraged the members that was the leaders that was in the top that was their relatives, there was their family members to make much children of their own because they were like elite. They were in the first group and those other was slaves under them. And my daughter was slave and she come there. She have about been there for 19 years uh, about that. It was when I left 
uh, to United States and left her with her father. And he the, uh, he is not into God, so he don't know anything about the spirit things. And um, and she was in ordinary school, but then she the school uh, they they were wealthy uh, kids in the school, but they they be. Uh, they uh, je be jealous on her, envy her for have been that summer when she come back to the school she had been to France, she had been to United States, she had been around uh, Italy, France and all uh, down in Europe, in the south of Europe with her father and she had been and visit me in United States and then she was with the church to France to the conference and they envied her so much so she couldn't stay in the school so she find this place this church they have a school and they, they train the kids to think like they think, to make them be slave under the, these church leaders that only catch the money and uh, those uh, slaves are working for them. But it has been, uh, with my daughter, it has been like she has started to see it but she don't know how to go away from that church. She have not the same thing as those other because she have me not been allowed to be together with a man. She she have been single the whole time because she have been slave, and slaves should not not uh, do. Uh, be married or have kids if uh, the church leaders can do kids uh, so those kids should, uh, is allowed to be born but not to the slaves and so there is this kind of slave work still today but it's um, I was looking at the, the law about it, but it uh, the law in Sweden it says uh, if you agree to something, that both sides agree to it, then they can't do anything about it. Then it's okay to have slaves if the slaves say yes, uh, I want to be slaves to you. And that's what my daughter have done. And uh, she don't know how to go away from them now. And uh, her father, he is, he have this woman in his life uh, living with him. And this woman don't like that he take care of his daughter. And uh, so now it's the door closed very much to her father. He still is her father and come and visit her and talk to her, but she, she he's not allowed to give her any money or help her in life. Uh, I understand that uh, this woman, she think that my daughter is old enough to take care of her life on her own and uh, she is because she is born 1985 so is, she is a full grown woman and uh, with a brain um, and uh, I see that it's a little different from her but now she is um, uh, she think this church is great because she now they don't have 
so many people to pick to be the entertainment. So the, my daughter, she never sing, and she can uh, win any contest, song contest. She sing, sing very beautiful, but she is not allowed to sing. It was another girl that was singing on the stage, but then they told me that <coughs> they had they had a, a band. I know that they have a band, uh, and they were playing every Saturdays. And now they told me that they didn't have all the people in the band. So they couldn't have this band perform. And uh, I saw that also that it was <coughs> it was not it was not many uh, people that was coming to to pay and eat there that was from uh, out from the church there was uh, more than half the most people was from Ukraine um, he have uh, this pastor he have always been in contact with Russia and because he had been a political person in the Communist Party. So he have always loved Russia and Ukraine and those countries in, in the Baltic states, Baltic countries. So now he get money to bring in people that running from Ukraine. And uh, there was one man that was from Uganda, I think with his sister or his daughter. Uh, there were two. So I went to him and talked to him a little. And uh, and he was singing on the stage and praise God in his way, you know, is a uh, Jesus that they think is God. And um, yeah. and then uh, it was this. I was the whole time I was thinking that now they are coming these people that I know since before in the church but they never show up and then my my daughter say when I ask about some of the people that she say they have got job in another place in another city far away from the church because they never got any money those it it was six people in the top of the church that got all the money from the church. And even if, I don't know what, what, what have going on, but what my daughter have say, it's uh, have been a hard discussion and really a fight about I suppose it's about the money because they have family. They have to feed their family so they maybe don't, didn't get all them uh, so much money. And uh, I say to my daughter that I see that the church is only half of what it was before. And those people that I know uh, since before they are not here uh, those church people from the past was mostly uh, old people that they have not 
the mindset to move away. They have their house and they have their retirement so they can be there in that place. And then it was a, <coughs> was a man there that owns the, the whole village that will have this gas station. And uh, I'd be surprised that he was very much into my daughter. <coughs> I was sitting and, and look at him and, and I, I was thinking, he looked like my daughter's father. He is the same kind of man like my daughter's father. And he was the same age as my daughter's father. So he was 72 years old. And he hit on my daughter. And she is not so old, so she won't to have that kind of man, even if he have lots of money. Uh, but maybe... Uh, the pastor is going to tell her to marry this man to to get all the money so maybe it's it was why he was there on this country feast to flirting with my daughter because he was very much i saw that he was very much in love with my daughter so uh, something can happen and that will uh, will be very hard hard to deal with the, the, what is called son-in-law that is older than me <laughs> but my daughter say it was nothing with him but you never know if the pastor her pastor say, marry him. She may be marry this old man. So, uh, this is the future of the church. It looks so very, very great, but it was not a good church. It was a very bad church. And I was wondering how will how can i take my daughter away from this sect and i didn't want it to hurt our relationship by doing bad things to the church and then the pastor say you are not allowed to talk to your mother you are not allowed to have a mother he could have said that so i have to be wise and uh, I, w I was talking to God to take care of it and uh, it took a long time you know uh, I tell you this to you that listen and, and that it maybe is not a quick fix for God to do something for you in your life it may be have many obstacles for God to could do it. But if he is into to change for you, your life, uh, things that is around you, he will do it. But it will never be in our time. What we see, it, we want everything to be yesterday and not in the future we want it now immediately but it like uh, the, in the bible Moses was in 40 years in the desert so it can take long time and so we have to have faith that God one day will will do it what what we ask God to to do, but we don't know the time when it will happen, 
and it had taken very long time but now I can tell that my daughter is uh, it's changing but in that way they are flirting with her in the church to make her be uh, on Saturday she was the manager for to tell us that was there uh, what food we should eat what they had for food for us and uh, and she was outside and uh, fixed the table for us and was the the host for for the feast so that that's a big step from peeling the potatoes in the kitchen for so many years so now they're flirting with her so now it's it in another way that she doesn't want to to go away from the church but she is open now it's an open door if something coming in that can change her way to think and I can talk to her more openly because she is a grown up a woman now so we are talking equal in age and uh, she don't have any and not much uh, experience of life being there in the church the whole time and living there in the, she live in the church she work in the church so she she had not much of life experience but i still can talk to her as a friend and a mother and an advisor uh, so i do, i don't feel like i i have to hold back and I ask her now, and I have asked her before, do you have plan B? And she, uh, she, don't, she didn't understand what I was talking about. Um, but I described it for her. If this church ending, maybe not ending, but they move because they have friends in Texas if this church that I told her for three four years ago more four five years I say that if they take everything that they can and move to Texas what are you doing then if you don't have this church what is your plan if, if it's happened? But she's shaking her head. But I ask her once again, do, uh, do you have a plan B? And she look at me, what are you talking about? And I say, if, uh, if it this end, this church, uh, either they move or it's only ending this. Because I saw the horses they had before was gone. They have sell the horses. And they have no living things uh, that they have to take care of. It was gone. Everything that was living of creature, n uh, animals. Uh, and the, those people have also moved away that was the that was the most working people they they left the church so they don't have anything there so it's it's uh, and the pastor was bad in his knee and he eating painkillers and he he d didn't look great at all and he was he have never wanted to talk to me because he 
have seen me as poor. He he only look at money, so he it's not about that. I have this experience with God, Elohim, uh, and he is in Jesus. Uh, it's not about that. It's about the money, uh, because he is a big friend to my daughter's father that is a millionaire and I think he can get money from him and uh, but now my daughter don't get money from her father so that's uh, he can't uh, can't see it like that anymore and uh, so he's, he talk it to me uh, much uh, like a friend because he ha have not so much to, uh, people to talk to and uh, and it seems like he was ending the church but his wife was and she was also she have always been uh, uh, bad talking to me tell me what to do uh, and those things and today she she uh, Saturday uh, she was not talking like that she was more humble in her way to talk to me so I, I think she understood that I saw saw what have happened with the church so I think they go into sell sell the property whatever they can get to buy it and, and maybe they sell it to the Ukraine people and then they're leaving and uh, if the Ukraine people going to start a church there will my daughter still be there it's not my life it's her life so I don't care what's going on because I work with my life and uh, now I'm going to tell you about my life it's uh, I wrote a, a letter yesterday to the to the doctor in Jerusalem and I didn't know if he uh, what religion he was in uh, but uh, when I send the email he he uh, uh, had automatic answer that he was away because it was the Jewish New Year uh, event uh, this weekend and uh, the twenty five September twenty five and and 26 and 27 and uh, he was away so I suppose he, he was he was Jewish and took off from his work and um, but I send it and it come uh, come through I w was thinking maybe it's be stopped by the devil in that way but it come back the answer that he was away from the office and then it says it uh, did a virus check also on my email and uh, so it come through and uh, I wrote him that I still waiting for the paper from the hospital the the letter the medical journal report about my pancreas and that is the main thing uh, so and I wrote to him that my doctor he don't like that I am Jewish and he don't want me to get my medicine that I need for my psoriasis 
and he say that will be the last. I have talked about this to you before, so I don't repeat it. But here, it's the last time I get injection of this medicine is in November. Then uh, after November, if I don't get help in Israel, I'm going to have the whole body bleeding on the outside. And inside it's going to be very bad. And it will kill me. Uh, I'm not going to be anymore here on earth. If not Israel is helping me. And I was, I was thinking about it. And I, I have said I have walked through the whole Bible in my life. And if you, if you want to know the Bible in today, what's going on today, you should uh, um, listen at my, all my episodes because I have explained it. And it has been like uh, I have walked in the Bible. So I knew that the end will be something with the... the a cross of Jesus, the killing of Jesus. But I was thinking, how can it, how will it be in my life if I am a female parallel to Jesus? What will happen in the end? And now have the answer coming. And that is the same end, but in a, in a modern in our, our, our time uh, event that is, uh, that is Jewish, that will decide for me if I should die or I am going to live. So I will be in the same situation as Jesus was when he was standing in front of, of the, the Herodes, um, if it was someone else, but the, 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 when they were judging him. And they let the evil one go free instead of Jesus. So that was people that decided who should live and who should die. And that was the Jewish people that did that. It doesn't matter what they are trying to, to say to you, but that was most people was Jewish when Jesus was, uh, was in the court and should, and they decide that, Jesus should die on the cross. And I am in that time now. So will I ask this out in the air, in the heaven? And I ask, oh, I have a very much a spirit on me now. So maybe it's coming and talking. Um, but I ask you uh, in heaven, will I have the same end as Jesus that they are going to tell, tell in the court that uh, I am going to be crucified? Will it be that this is a Jewish doctor and he can decide if I should live or if I should die. That's up to him now. And I am in Jerusalem. In the same situation as Jesus. So this is what it was target for. When it started. When I was walking. And uh, when God come in year 2000. And say that I should be 
the chosen one that the female uh, female part of Jesus parallel to Jesus I should walk and and I knew after a while when I saw that I walking through the Bible uh, the, with my life and then I understood that I will end about the same as Jesus, but how exactly should the end be? And the end uh, will be when the doctor is telling me if he's going to help me to live. Or he, he tell me no and I die. But... Uh, if he say no, and everything is no, I will try to stay in, in Israel, to die in Israel, like Jesus did. Uh, because I'm not going to be here for a long time if uh, I don't get my medicine anymore. So that... Uh, I am not going to have the medicine in Israel if it will be, I must have a new pancreas. Because this pancreas I have now, as I translated the, my medical journal from Swedish to English, I, I wrote him that when I wait for a paper I have to translate what they are saying in Swedish I've translated on my own because I don't know when the paper is coming it's maybe never coming and uh, so I wrote him I and then I saw it I maybe have re read it but it have, have been too hard for me to to take it in I deny it but now when I translate my medical journal, it says that I have the beginning of cancer. I don't have the cancer, but I have this foundation, that platform to get cancer in my pancreas. And if I get cancer in my pancreas, Pancreas is it the end. So I need to have surgery in uh, Israel to uh, to get a new pancreas in my body. And uh, that is, it's, uh, I'm not frightened at all. Because uh, I have been up to heaven and I know where I'm going. I know how it looked like in heaven, so I'm not frightened, and I'm I'm very sure that uh, God will help me with my pain I get from uh, the cancer. If I get the cancer, I, the pain in the, from the cancer will. I get help from the spirit world to to go away from uh, feeling the pain. I can work with my spirit to not be in my body, but be already in heaven before I die here. Uh, I can do that. So I, I am already in in the heaven but laying in a bed with lots of pain in my body I should have but I don't have any pain in inside my brain because I am already in heaven and uh, it's gonna be only a snap cut off the the uh, silver cord the cord that is between heaven and earth because I am not going back to earth I'm going to stay in heaven 
until heaven can come down here in the universe be down coming down to this planet and going to stay in in heaven and not in in the soil because uh, in the soil that's hell and I am in heaven I know that so it's only before before I going back to heaven how it will be that can be a little concern but uh, I'm if I know that no one will help me uh, but God will help me to deal with the pain and come back to heaven that's okay for me I I have done my work and uh, I hope I can pay for this podcast so that it can stay at least uh, one year after I have going back to heaven so other people can listen at what I have talk about in this podcast and understand and then uh, my work here on earth have not been in vain because you can listen at my podcast even if I am not here on earth I will try to hold this uh, podcast alive uh, as long as I can. And maybe there is someone that wants to hold it uh, and pay for it so it stay here. So other people can listen that have not find this podcast before after my dad not death that they still can find it and uh, find an, the understanding who is God and what's in heaven and a little about the enemy we have and the place the enemy are in so I, I thank you for listen and uh, I'm not uh, scared it's uh, it is interesting for me to see what will happen in Israel if I should be allowed to live because uh, the Jewish people are saying yes you are going to live or if they tell me that they don't want me here on earth so we will see it seems like we have come into the end and this is the last day of the Jewish year and then we will see the next year if I am going to stay here on earth and maybe doing something more for God for heaven and uh, I don't know if uh, it's a spirit here but I have spirits in my home and but I promise before I go to bed uh, now I remember now is the spirit over my head now on my skull on my uh, what is called um, over my head on my skull there and uh, so uh, it remind me that I say that yesterday uh, when I go to bed uh, that you don't need to wake me up in the night and talk to me because nowadays you can talk to me in the light in the daytime 
and not need to wake me up in the night to talk. So uh, this spirit remind me about that uh, I was saying, promised them that I should let them talk today. So if it's much you want to talk to or should I make another episode for you to only talk? <laughs> it say it says uh, both. So I take this part as the short one and then do another later today that they can come and talk then because the spirits say both so uh, she uh, she's saying this whatever they can do to help it's time for you to act now we can do much here from heaven But we, we can't do everything. There must be an action from you on earth. And uh, you are like a battery for us. You, you make it easier for us to work on earth if you act also. She have uh, this smiled voice. If she is young, I don't see her. I am only hear her. In that way, they do with the telepathy way. They talk to me. Um, I see her now a little. It's a girl with a white white robe she have a white dress so are you an angel uh, she is an angel she is not a spirit in the other way she is one of those picked by God to do this between earth and heaven things uh, working the spirit the angel are working very hard the spirit is coming through when they need to come through but the, those angels are always with us but not talk to us all the time but they are with us and she is one of them and she have this mild voice so she say, uh, "I let you go now, and then, and then we do that later today." And I have done the promise now. I have promised you, Angel, that you can come through. Maybe in the evening, when it's uh, dark outside. And uh, I sit here and uh, only want to talk to you in heaven. And you want to talk with me. So I promise you to do that tonight. So thank you for visiting just now and talk. And uh, thank you you that listen to this episode. I still have the, her voice in me. Uh, so it's, it's like she is saying this also together with me. So uh, God bless you. And I hope you listened this evening because that will be uh, heaven. Angels and spirits talking only, not me talking. So we'll see what they are will what they will say. So thank you for listening and God bless you.